the solid command and the donut command are two different unique commands and object types in AutoCAD. The solid command creates a 2D filled polygon. The first two points define one edge of the polygon. The third point is diagonally opposite of the second point, and the fourth point is diagonally opposite of the first point. That's confusing, and I agree with you completely. Solids are great because it's not a hatch pattern that you have to control or mess with. It just creates a closed polygon that does have a solid fill to it. It can consist of as little as three points to it, like a triangle, or it can have as many as four points, like a four-sided polygon. So let's draw a solid. To start the solid command, you have to type in solid. It's an older command, and it's not even in the ribbon. So you have to type it in. So press Enter. Now you're going to pick your first point, and then a second point. Now solids can be difficult because you can't see where you've picked. So we pick somewhere down here, somewhere up here. Now when I pick a third point, it's going to come up here. And then a fourth point I'm going to pick up here. And there's my solid. Now I'm still continuing on with my command. And it's looking for my third point. It assumes that points three and points four from my previous solid are points one and two of my new solid. So that's kind of cool because then I can make this continuous shape. So I'm going to make this weird arc looking thing. I'm going to continue on and go like this. Or I'm just going to pick one point now and press enter. And I can continue on from there if I'd like. Press enter again and I'm out. Now this isn't one item. Each one of these objects is its own object. And you can grip edit it. Just grab the grips and move them around. You can delete it, copy it, move it, etc. When you open up your properties palette and look at it, it says it's a solid. Here's the bit of information, etc. Solids can be kind of weird because if you don't draw it in the proper sequence, you're going to get a bow tie. Watch one, two, and instead of coming down from three, I'm going to start three up here and then go four. Say, so, wow, well, how did that happen? Well, this is what happens. This is point one, two three, and then four. Let me stretch it up here. If this is point one, point one is the vertex between points two and three. It will always be that way. Point two is connected to one and four, if there's a four. If not, it connects to three. Three always connects from one to four, and four is from three to two. So you have to keep that in mind. If I stretch this, you can see how the shape changes. I get like this arrowhead shape. You can pull it over here. See, one is always connected to two and to three. Three is always connected to one and four. And two always connects from one to four, unless, of course, there's a three. And there is no four. Then you'll always have a triangle in that case. So just be careful when you construct your solid that it goes that way. 2D solids are filled only when the fill mode system variable is turned on or set to one and the viewing direction is orthogonal to the 2d solid meaning if i rotate this see they're flat they're two-dimensional solids and once i let go it only gives me a wireframe model but if i go back to my plan view or my top view i can see it solid again if I type in fill mode and set it to zero, which turns it off, regen the drawing, I get just the wireframes. Before we had solid hatching, a lot of times for different things, we would use solids like this for small shapes, for blocks. We would make a series of them and make octagon shapes, hexagons, etc. You know, triangles, things like that. That way it would fill or shade an area and we can put text on top of it and it made an identifier of sorts. Now, solids are great for four points or for four-sided objects. But if you want something that's round, you know, or a circle, what you need to use is a donut. 
A donut consists really of two arced polylines that are joined together end to end and are concentric. The width of the polyline is what determines the specific inside and outside diameters of the circle. So we don't really have a donut object, but we do have a donut command. Just type in donut, press enter, and it asks you for the inside diameter. It usually defaults to 0.5 unless you've started to type in some other donut properties. I'm just going to press enter, and then again the default is 1 for the outside diameter. Press enter again, and now I can paste it wherever I want, and I can keep pasting it. Donuts work great in 2D wireframe drawings for things like bolt holes, you know, or uh, sewer manhole covers, things like that. When I select it, you can see from the grips that it's really just a polyline. Plus, it tells you that right here in the properties palette. And it has all of the different properties of a polyline. Now, I can draw to it, and I can go to the center of these because it's an arc, and so it has a center. If I were to draw another line, I can get to midpoints of it, endpoints of it, etc. And you can see as I follow along here the type of shape that it is. So you can do a lot with this thing. If I select it, I can change the global width from 0.25 to 0.5, and that's going to make it a little thicker. It'll keep the same center, the same radius or diameter, but the thickness changes. Now you can make a donut in just about any size you want. If I give it a zero inside diameter, that means it's going to be completely filled. This inside circle part won't exist. Now I can make it as large on the outside as I want. And keep in mind that when you do this, this is the actual outside of the diameter of what it's going to be. And there's a solid filled circle. Real easy to make. Again, in mechanical drawings and structural drawings, these work great for bolt holes. It's what I would often use them for when I was doing mechanical and structural drafting and detailing. They work great for that. When I select it, this grip right here is where the actual line is. You know, in this case, it's an arc for a polyline. And the global width of 1 means it's drawing at this circle at 1 unit wide. Now I can change this to 0, and you're going to see exactly what the circle is. So keep these things in mind, that this is how they work. So when you try to draw you know, to you know, the outside of the circle, you really can't snap to it. You've got to kind of eyeball it, or offset it, and then draw it in later. So that's one downfall that you can have with your donuts.